left ventricular function as seen by color Doppler in M mode. In this talk, we are going to evaluate the color Doppler in M mode for the study of diastolic function of the left ventricle. Basically, we get a color Doppler flow of the mitral valve in a 2D four chamber view and set the M mode cursor along the region of the flow and by pressing the M mode button. We will have an image like this, the color indicating flow just like the color Doppler, where the red color means blood flow in direction to the transducer, and blue away from the transducer, located at the left ventricular apex. There is also a structure like the mitral valve in M mode, seen here when closed during systole, and disappearing when open we see during systole a blue flow, then away from the apex in direction of the left ventricular outflow tract. When the mitral valve opens, we see its flow in red going in apical direction to the upper part of the tracing. Later comes the atrial contraction and another flow in direction of the transducer. These flows frequently have aliasing with an inverted direction of isovelocity indicating it is higher than the Nyquist limit. Then we have an initial velocity in red, then the velocity gets higher and changes to blue, and then gets slower and changes back to red again. Notice that a higher velocity will appear as aliasing, not as its extension toward the upper part of the M-mode tracing. This extension is what we call the flow propagation, and the velocity of the flow propagation is measured as the aliasing slope. Just like any measurements of velocity done in a M-mode tracing. This is a normal case. This slope should indicate a flow propagation velocity higher than 45 centimeters per second, if normal. Here, this velocity is 25 centimeters per second, what indicates a diastolic function abnormality, a poor relaxation of the left ventricle. Another case, we should not measure the first slope. The velocity of this slope is 74 centimeters per second, but the aliasing slope that measure here 47 centimeters per second. Some authors use this propagation flow velocity as a mean to differentiate normal mitral flow from pseudonormal. As we see here, with decreasing relaxation of the left ventricle, this propagation velocity also decreases. With type 1 diastolic dysfunction, it is abnormal, and when there is a type 2 or pseudonormal, it is also abnormal. What would help? to differentiate it from a normal mitral flow. In case of restricted diastolic abnormalities, type 3 or 4, this propagation velocity may also be abnormal. In our experience, the propagation flow velocity is not a good method to differentiate normal from type 2 pseudonormal diastolic dysfunction. This method more often is completely normal even in patients with restrictive diastolic dysfunction. There is some literature that supports this lack of accuracy. This study shows clearly the total impossibility to separate the type 2 abnormality from normal. It demonstrates the impossibility to separate any type between themselves or the normal. No wonder the last guidelines just remove it from the utilized methods, claiming the difficulty to obtain it in what seems a better way to justify its presence in the past guidelines as a good method and its absence in the new one, since there is no difficulty whatsoever to obtain it.